This time on IFAF. Idaho Falls and Four Leaf Clovers. You're at a 10. I need you to be at a two. <laughs> it, it, was, it was actually very innocent. Like, literally, it was a pie day celebration. We uh, ate pie. It'll we'll have great. our vibrators with us. It'll be fantastic. <laughs> it's a great time. It was a really <laughs> awkward time. And, like, looking back, I realized what a freaking dork I was. You've got your big boy panties on right now <laughs> if you're listening to us. IFAF, Idaho Falls infotainment talk show with Mike Nelson and Carly Morgan. Coming up on the show, Oscar winners, our Girl Scout conundrum figured out. Idaho Falls <laughs> Farmer's Market expands even more. Pierce Brosnan's <laughs> fine, a new form of currency that might be handy in a post-apocalyptic society. And vibrators. Because <laughs> why wouldn't we? All right, phones on D&D. Everything that could have gone wrong in the last couple podcasts has. Yep. <laughs> now we're having an issue where, like, we record an hour or two mm-hmm. and shit goes south. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. I try to be a good computer guy. Right. I right. try to update my stuff. Well, and that's the thing. Ever since you updated it, that's when it started acting weird. It's always the update that screws you. Right. I've messed with memory allocation stuff, and we'll see. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Worst case scenario, I guess there's no episode this week. We get a break. Yeah. <laughs> Not really a break since we've done all the work, but you know. It'd be a shame though. Yeah, because I think we got some great stuff. We do. We do. So welcome to the one and only podcast approved by Duncan Idaho. <laughs> but I'm <laughs> funny. Was it at Dune? It was it was the first, it was Dune Part One. Right. That we were so surprised was on Max. Yeah, it was on Max like the same day it the came out. The weekend it came out. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't believe it either. But it was also really cool because realistically, I wasn't gonna go to the movie theater to watch it. Uh, you um, know? R- exactly. Yeah. And so it's like, uh, okay, yeah, I'll watch this since since it's in my own room. Yeah. Right, yeah. Um, we watched Wonka uh-huh. on Max. Lots of Tim Tam Shellaman. Earlier this week, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. It was actually really fun. Yeah. But here's the thing. I'm so sick of the sequels and prequels and remakes and stuff like that. Reimaginings. Right. You know, but this one Except actually- Except for Into the Spider-Verse. Amazing. Right. That Well, that's different too. They're doing something so different than they've ever done before. You know, it's kind of like Barbie. And across the- Yeah. You're right. Because like, realistically, there have been like 26 other Barbie movies- and then there's this one, right? Straight to DVD. Right, right. And, yeah. they, and they're all like based on different stories that are like normal fairy tales and stuff. And then they completely reimagined Barbie and made a story about her as an actual Barbie. You know, so it wasn't anything like the previous Barbie movies. And I kind of feel like Wonka wasn't quite to that level, but it was like around that level. I, y- you know, and I'm <sighs> as far as reimaginings go. As far as reimaginings go, like we're all into the multiverse now with Rick mm-hmm. and Morty and Spider Verse and Avengers Endgame. Right. Like it's all about the multiverses now. And yeah, I could, I could watch that stuff, I think, forever. Like I've been a Peter Parker fan since the 80s. Oh, and sure. And now I'm a Miles Morales fan. Mm-hmm. Like I like new shiny toys. I yeah. Don't know. Now, I watched the Oscars. You haven't spent much time at my Mojo Dojo Casa house. I've been so busy. Week. Yeah. You, you've been busy. You had your thing. I had mine. Uh-huh. Um, but I, okay. So we watched Wonka together. Uh-huh. And I also watched the Oscars presentation. It's on Hulu. Uh-huh. Kimmel hosted. Not Which, a lot of surprises. And I'm so mad that I missed it, though, because I love watching the Oscars. Gosling saying, uh-huh. I'm just Ken. And I loved his little uh, gentleman, gentleman prefer blondes reference in oh, there. Did you see the clip? Yeah. Yeah. It it was great. Yeah. Um, let's see. Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito <laughs> presenting an award because they were in the movie Twins. Right, and right. And then they called out because they both played Batman villains in the classic <laughs> Tim Burton yes. 80s Batman. Yeah, I remember that. DeVito the Penguin uh-huh. and Schwarzenegger Mr. Freeze. Uh-huh. And then they pointed to Michael Keaton (laughs) in the audience, just badass. (laughs) That's hilarious. Imagine getting credit for something you did 40 years ago. (laughs) Right, right. But he deserves it. 
Twins is kind of an underrated movie that I'd love to see again. Yeah. It's not that, okay, here's the thing. I'm saying underrated like it was a great movie. It was not, but it was a really fun movie. And it's something that definitely like stuck in my brain for a long time because it was one of the few VHSs that my granny had at her house. So anytime we'd go over there, we'd watch like oh. that or Clueless <laughs> or something like that. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Paul Rudd. Oh, I know. Beth Brittany was Murphy. was so cute. Oh, I know. Alicia Silverstone. I loved Brittany Murphy too. She was so good. Rolling with the homies. <laughs> you know, I was actually, oh, I was helping out at my friend's shop yesterday and her other friend was also there, Jamie, and she did the rolling with the homies thing. And I was like, whoa, dude, <laughs> way to bring me back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, anyway, point is that was super, like, that's a movie I want to see again. And Keaton, you know, was a popcorn movie actor. Right. Uh, certainly Birdman proved... <laughs> Him as a serious actor. I think he was probably before then. Mm -hmm. So I got a little FOMO. You know, right. I watched the Oscars and I'm like, I want to see some stuff. Mm -hmm. So we wa we also watched Poor Things together. Right. With Which Emma was Stone. a crazy movie. Now we watched that and a lot of just up front, a lot of Emma Stone full frontal. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then she's at the Oscars giving her access acceptance speech and shouting out her three-year-old daughter. And mm -hmm. I'm like, wait, she's a mom? Yeah. Like, last time I remember, she was an easy A. Yeah, I know. I know. And Well, I mean, I remember her from La La Land, which she was so oh, good in. Oh, yeah. I love La La Land. Dun, One of my dun, favorite dun, movies. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, just uh, the best. Yeah, great. Uh-huh. I didn't realize in retrospect, oh, I was looking at a mother in those scenes. Yeah. And um, so I think that's brave. I think she deserves everything she got for that. I mean, it's and a little less brave when you look like Emma Stone. You know, it's like, oh, no, you look perfect. How terrible for you. But you know that's got to be some work, man. Oh, yeah, of course. Like, but I mean, that's sort of part of her job. Yeah. Like, if my job was to work out eight hours yeah. a day, I would also look great. I, yeah, <laughs> if I if I had to get naked, and we're going to be, we're, we're going to talk a little bit more about nakedness on stage or <laughs> on camera later in this episode. Not yeah. what you think. Um, but but yeah, if that were my job, I would hate my life. It, yeah, I, really I don't would. think I could do it. Like, I don't look good naked. I, I just don't. Yeah. <laughs> Still haven't seen Oppenheimer, but you know what I did watch uh -huh. uh, without you? I hope it's okay. Is because I know you get mad when I watch something. Well, sometimes that, you watch really good stuff that I've been meaning to watch. I watched Maestro. I haven't heard of that one. Okay, never mind. Forget. Okay, so I don't know who won what for what, uh -huh. but it had Bradley Cooper in it. Now, I I only know Bradley Cooper from Rocket Raccoon and Guardians of the Galaxy. Right. And I remember him from Silver Linings Playbook. Yes. Yeah. And He's that good was in that. right. And and that was when J Law, mm -hmm. I think Jennifer Lawrence went from right from popcorn Katniss movie. Yeah, from yeah to an actual actress. Serious from yeah. Katniss to actress. <laughs> yeah. And and yeah, Bradley Cooper was good in that as well. He was good. He was in the also one... in Wedding Crashers. Do you remember that? Oh yes, he was. He yeah. was the douche like yeah, uh, the douche frat... fiance. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Um, what else was he in that was really like? Uh... Oh, the one with Lady Gaga. A Star Is Born. Yes. Aha! I got like there. the third or fourth remake of that film. Right. Yeah. yeah. But but this one, I think. And and some might argue with me, like, oh no, the dude that happened two or three movies ago. Mm -hmm. This is Maestro is the movie that took Bradley Cooper, in my mind anyway, from Pretty Boy, sexy Pretty Boy, Hangover. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Yeah, right. To um, serious actor. Mm -hmm. So he, not only did he have, I think, a, a prosthetic on his nose. Oh. For the whole thing, but they also aged him. Okay, kind of like a uh, Nicole like, Kidman in The Hours. Yes. Yeah. Yes, or Charlize Theron, I think, mm -hmm. in Monster. But did she have a prosthetic in that or just like makeup that made her look purposefully shitty? I don't know. I don't know. I haven't seen that one, actually. Oh, it's good. Yeah, I've heard. I mean, it's, heard. it's horrible and it's good. Right, yeah. But Maestro, like... It wasn't the movie I wanted to see, right. but it was so good. It mm -hmm. mostly dealt with his personal life. Now, I have a big thing for conductors, uh -huh. and the reason I have a big thing for conductors is when you see that name you recognize, mm -hmm. you know the arrangement and the tempo and and everything else is going to be right on. Right. As someone who knows no names of any conductors, 
I will take your word on that. Because realistically, like, I don't look at the conductor. I'm just like, oh, this is a song I want to hear. Great. Well, you know Leonard Bernstein from R.E.M. It's the end of the world as we know it and I feel fine. Oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, I know that Because song. that's the that's one of two parts of the song where they break it down. And that's and by the way, way before Billy Joel, we didn't start the fire, which I feel is a cheap ripoff <laughs> of R.E.M.'s It's the end of the world as we know okay, it and I fair, feel fine. fair. Leonard Bernstein was the conductor of the New York Philharmonic and it was a freak accident, by the way. Really? He, you know, they say success comes when preparation meets opportunity. Right. Yeah, I've heard that. They called him one day and said, the conductor is sick. Can you cover? Uh-huh. And he was like, yep. And then he made headlines. Wow. And the rest is history. Of course, yeah. he did the score for West Side Story. Yes. Yeah. That was Which, 20 years later. And also, dude, West Side Story is a bad play. Like, it's just not good. The music is the only thing worthwhile in it. Speaking of multiverses and reimaginings, though, mm-hmm. it is a reimagining of... Romeo and Juliet. Yes. Which also is kind of not great, but at least it's better than West Side Story. Because really... <laughs> okay, I don't know if people realize this, but the entire plot of Romeo and Juliet Juliet takes place over like three or four days. Yeah. They see each other and they're like, fuck yeah, and decide <laughs> to get married, like run away together, and then kill themselves over each other. I think we've mentioned this before, but it's important to point out, uh, and this isn't revisionist history, this is a peek into the past. Oh, sure. Love didn't used to be a thing. Oh, yeah, no. It did not used to be a requisite for marriage. Yeah, marriages were very much more of a business transaction. Yeah. Yeah. And so it was a cautionary tale against love, Mm -hmm. particularly teenage love. Yes. (laughs) Yeah, well, and that's the thing. They're like 13 and 15 in that. Yeah. Or like 14 or something. Yeah. They're so little. They're just babies. Yeah. You know? I mean, you see the the Leonardo DiCaprio one, and they're like at least older teens. They're like 19, 18, somewhere in there. That's the Romeo plus Juliet Baz Luhrmann. Which is beautiful and so well done. Which I've never seen. (gasps) Can we put that on the list? We got a couple to add to the list. Yeah. You know what? That one we can watch this afternoon if you want. (laughs) But I'm big into conductors. Uh Uh-huh. Okay, so there's Leonard Bernstein, conductor uh-huh. of the New York Phil, um, from the I don't know 30s to the there's 70s. Just a Phil in New York, he's got a guy following him around doing this with his arms. <laughs> I also love Arthur Fiedler from the Boston Pops. Oh, okay, Keith Lockhart from the Utah Symphony from like 98 to 08, who okay. then went on to the Boston Pops. You just like the Boston Pops, big maybe. fan. Yes, yeah. <laughs> well, there's Leopold Stokowski from Disney's mm-hmm. Fantasia. Okay. You remember that? That one That one actually does sound more familiar than any of the other names that you've spouted off. <laughs> There's Gustavo Dudamel, the uh, mm-hmm. hot long-haired dude from um, the L.A. Phil. So, yeah, okay. there's, like, when you are searching... Okay, I don't know if you know <laughs> this you about me. Can you imagine being a hot conductor, though? Because, like, if you think of a conductor, he's, like, balding, at least in the back. He's a little guy. He's, like, usually really small and skinny and, like, old. And then he just like goes up and waves his, ar- his arms oh, around. Yeah. So being a hot conductor and oh, walking out on the stage and having up, everyone go, it's really weird. Look up <laughs> Gustavo Dudamel. Yeah, okay. He is the dude. <laughs> he is, c- conductors have gotten a lot hotter. Really? And then there's Andre Ryu. And some people might argue, oh, he's just for pop. Yes, he is. <laughs> and I love that. That's cool. I he's, like that. And not only is he a conductor, but he is an arranger and a performer as well. So I'd put him in the pantheon of conductors. Anyway, my review of Maestro, uh, Leonard Bernstein was kind of a dog. Like he not only had multiple affairs with women, but also men. Oh, and it sort of died. Bisexual king. Yeah. he sort of dived into that. And, and, you know, his wife's feelings about that, his, Probably not very good had, feelings. Right. The impact it had on his kids. Probably not very good either. I wanted to watch a movie more like Amadeus or um, uh, the Gary Oldman, Beethoven, Immortal Beloved. Okay. Like okay. I wanted to learn more, more about the process. Yes. Okay. And it wasn't that still a good movie and boy, did it pow Bradley Cooper in my mind. Okay. One up, one up, one up. All right, I can Man, dig that. Like, I can dig that. Now, do you know if he's the one who won Best Actor this time? I don't know who won. I know we're so we're so terrible. I, I don't even. know. Good thing we're not a news source. We're All just I here know for the is jokes. When Pacino introduced Best Film, like he didn't do all the nominees, he just read the winner. <laughs> <laughs> 
hilarious. Spoiler alert. When you That's watch, so funny. When you watch the Oscars on Hulu. <laughs> I feel like there's so much room for error at the Oscars, you know, because so it's oh, all yeah. live. Yep. You know? Yeah. But yeah. Hmm. So speaking of movies, we need to put on our list. Uh-huh. And getting to our very first comment slash follow up from Greg. What's up, Greg? Dude. So we were talking about. To, uh, Toxic Avenger last episode. Oh, jeez. That trash fire. <laughs> Greg said, oh, you think that movie's bad? You need to watch Troll 2. Trolls Tr- 2? Like... Not Trolls 2 World Tour. Okay. Although... I mean, realistically, it's a cash grab. Come on. Can, well, can we say... No, I, th- <sighs> I loved... DreamWorks movies have this nasty habit of making the sequels better than the original, okay, starting with so Shrek true. 25 years ago. Shrek 2 was like actually the only good sequel that I've ever seen. Shrek Forever After is amazing. Yeah. But the one that's the yeah. one with Rumple Steel Skin, uh-huh. right? Okay. Yeah. But um <laughs> Kung Fu Panda 4? Okay, honestly, Need to see Kung that? Fu Panda that's does on rock. Our, we got to put that on our list. Yeah. But um, well, and I love that Pixar is sort of, or sorry, not Pixar, sorry, DreamWorks has sort of um, cemented itself as the anti Disney. And you know, that all started with Shrek. Yes. You know, like the whole reason that Shrek happened was because uh, the people who founded DreamWorks left Disney and then they modeled Farquaad after the, the guy who took over at Disney. Because they'd worked together and they hated him. Yeah. And the whole thing they were going for. Farquad. (laughs) You're such a Farquad. Right? And the whole thing they were going for was they said, okay, we're not going to make our protagonist attractive or cool or like, you know. Yeah, he lived in a swamp. He was fat. He was green. He had earwax. He was a literal ogre. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. They were like, no, we're going to find the underdoggiest of underdogs of all the fairy tales. And that's our protagonist. (laughs) So, and they did a great job. And not only that, but they didn't do any of their own music. They they did, um, you know, different artists and yeah. just threw them in there. Right. You know, which is so different from Disney because every Disney movie is a animated musical, you know? I wonder if Disney will one day buy Has Been Hotel, whatever oh, production I mean, company that falls under. Because realistically, eventually. That is so visually appealing. Right now it's and, under A24. Okay. And musically just mm-hmm. fabulous. Right. So Greg told us about Troll 2. Uh-huh. We, okay, so there was a troll in 1986. Okay. And Troll 2 was meant to piggyback on the fame of the previous movie, even though it doesn't have trolls, it has goblins. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And Wait, did the original troll have gob- have goblins or trolls or? I don't know. I think you trolls. Don't know? Okay. Which would make more sense. But this is a movie we need to put on our list for The Crew. Okay. When we all get together and have an MST3K style okay, uh-huh. roast of a movie, we've got to put this on our list. Okay. Yeah. I'm down. Yeah. Like we did with Love Never Dies. With Love the Never Phantom Dies. Of the Opera, Phantom of the Opera sequel. And what was the other one? We sort of. Uh, what was roasted. that other one that we. Oh, it was the Toxic Avenger. Okay. Yeah. Toxic Avenger. Yeah. And along with that, we should probably put. Um, what was it? Let's see. There was a movie called. Oh, are you thinking of S. Darko? Because you were talking about how this one retconned the you, original one. You know, I've never wasted my time on that, but I would. Oh, we so should. When I was younger, I liked it better than Donnie Darko, which means that it's terrible. Oh, <laughs> your taste back then was just horrible. Just shit. Absolute shit. And that's cool. It's fine. <laughs> like, I recognize it. But like, looking back and thinking about the things, like the elements of it that I do remember, I was like... I'm like, hmm, that was probably not a good movie. And the whole idea was that they were based on characters from Donnie Darko, but like it wasn't the same people based or anything. Based on Yeah. No Jake Gyllenhaal, right? No. Yeah. No. Like, come on. Yeah. It's like Samantha. It's his little sister when she grows up. The movie I'm thinking of that I, I saw, it's on my radar, just never acted on it, is mm-hmm. The Room. And oh, then, yeah. And then James Franco uh-huh. made that movie about. The, the disaster artist called it. Yes. Thank yes. you. So we ought to put troll two. Thanks, Greg. <laughs> and the disaster artist and maybe the room. I mean, I feel like we, here's the thing. It, it's kind of like how we did the toxic of. Avenger where we did the musical <laughs> and the movie. I think we Ooh. have to do both. Oh yeah. With the disaster. In artist. One night. Yeah, I think I so. It. I jokingly said to Greg, I haven't seen troll two. Do I need to see troll? <laughs> To appreciate the sequel. And he's like, dude, it's not even a sequel. They only named it that to capitalize on the success of 
Funny. Okay. All right. I'm a down. movie four years earlier. Yeah, we'll so, have to look that up. That sounds fun. In fact, it's such a bad movie that nearly 20 years after its release, the movie's child star Michael Stevenson made a documentary about its production and fan base titled The Best Worst Movie. Oh, really? Now, is this the one where like they're shooting a scene and it goes from like daytime to nighttime? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what makes it so bad. We're going to have to find out. I guess so. I guess so. Oh, wait. Okay. I've heard of another bad movie, though, I think called like Planet B or something like that. So we might have to look that up and figure that one out, too. We're putting so many movies on our list. Right. I see that shirt over there. It looks just a little familiar. You, uh, it just says IFAF on it. Right. It it has no other meaning. (laughs) It certainly isn't made to look like say uh, Doc and Marty or Rick and Morty logo at all. (laughs) There's no similarity or relation or copyright infringement whatsoever. None. On the shirt. None. None at all. And it has nothing to do with the fact that we've been watching a lot of Rick and Morty lately. (laughs) Yeah. All right. Yeah. um, It's not available at Teton T-shirts. Probably for good reason. It's a one-off I printed just for myself, Greg Hale style. Right, right. Until Eagle says that it's fine. (laughs) So two more follow-ups. Down Tempo Montage, love your username, on TikTok (laughs) says, Hey, why you shitting on Bear Glove? That stuff smells like Baja Blast and it works. Oh, I mean, honestly, like if I smelled a man and he smelled like Baja Blast, I'd be following him to the next Taco Bell. (laughs) That's (laughs) (laughs) Let's get a Mexican pizza. Yeah. (laughs) That's a tall drink of water. Right. Tall tall drink of soda. I want to smell like Baja Blast, buddy. I mean, honestly, that sounds great. I might try that out. Thanks for the suggestion. But also, you got to admit that that name is stupid and makes no sense. Yeah, it does. Like, especially if it smells like Baja Blast, it's got to be like very coconut heavy. What'd you say? Dragon taint? (laughs) Yeah. I I almost want to put that into an AI image creator and see what I see. (laughs) Oh, no. I mean, it's not going to be good. Show me dragon taint <laughs> you know what you'll probably get ban- banned from that ai generator too probably yeah i don't uh, think you can use word taint in a i don't think you can. <laughs> in an ai generator final follow-up <laughs> this is a painful one for me because i hate it when i'm wrong uh kevin lussie decided to deus ex machina this girl scout cookie situation <laughs> between abc bakers and little brownie bakers uh-huh he um So I owe you a mea culpa. What am I just speaking Latin now? (laughs) Apparently. I don't know if, here's the thing. All of the younger generation will have no idea what you're referencing. Okay. uh, So on that note, carpe diem, kids. (laughs) Or carpe noctum if you're a goth. Yeah, there we go. All right. Deus ex machina is a plot device used in Greek and later Roman theater where there, when there was an unsolvable problem Mm -hmm. in the play, a god from the machine, that's the literal translation, uh-huh. you know, came down and solved the problem. Right. Um, Kevin has come down like <laughs> a god and solved our problem. <laughs> and uh, mea culpa is just apology. Mm-hmm. What'd you say? Carpe diem yeah. is seize, seize the, the day. day. Carpe noctum sees the night. Veni vidi vici. We came, we saw, we conquered. Right. Gratis means you're doing it for free. Mm-hmm. And thanks, Kevin. <laughs> and then there's all kinds of numbers that we're not getting into because we are not a Latin learning podcast. No. All right. So, Kevin. So, okay. Here's the real story. Two years ago, the Silver Sage Council of the Girl Scouts, which, which covers all of Southeast Idaho and some of Nevada, some of Utah, um, they switched from Little Brownie Bakers to ABC Bakers. What? Three weeks ago, when I called my contact, who should have known, I said, what are we, ABC or Little Brownie? She said, oh, we're definitely Little Brownie. Always have been. We've always gotten Samoas here in East Idaho, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I grew up on. I'm not wrong. Okay, wait. Except starting a year ago, the Silver Sage Council signed a four-year contract, come to find out. Okay, that actually, I feel a little dumb now for just barely connecting these dots, but I do remember... When I saw Samoas and they were called Caramel Delights instead. So, so Kevin, I just got bad information, buddy. Um, But I got it from a really reliable Girl Scout and source and didn't go to any stores. Didn't see. Sorry, I did go to stores three times, three different stores to see the Girl Scouts on a weekend. 
and missed two of them. One of them was packing up outside Walmart. Oh, yeah. So you don't want to be that guy. Right. So anyway, Kevin just went click and <laughs> solved our problem. And thank you. <laughs> and look for soon to be coming a bonus mini-sode. Mm -hmm. We're going to do a full contrast and compare. I love that. And we're going to make you proud, Kev. Yeah. I that'll promise. be awesome. So last week, hope you had a happy Pi Day, mm -hmm. a happy Ides of March. <laughs> so many memes with a knife through the salad, the Caesar salad dressing. <laughs> you know, which is so funny, and I love that. Speaking of Latin, uh -huh. Ides basically means middle. Right, yeah. Middle of the month. And then there's a tu brute and you brutus. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, and I didn't celebrate Pi Day this year, did you? I didn't. I didn't have I any know. pie. I'm trying to cut down on the sugary carbs. <laughs> I know. I this know. This Girl Scout episode is going to kill me, Kevin, and I'll do it with pleasure. <laughs> I love it, honestly. <laughs> you know, there was one year in um, high school, I think my senior year, we celebrated Pi Day. Me and my friends went down to uh, Pocatello to hang out with some college guys that oh, we knew. <laughs> hot. And it, it, was, it was actually very innocent. Like, literally, it was a pie day celebration. We I, ate pie. Oh. But I was so nervous. And, a like, I kind of... Did you have the a la mode? We didn't, actually. Now that I think about oh, it, yeah. how dumb is that? Ice cream me up, baby. <laughs> but I was so nervous that I kind of stuck to the guy that I'd gone there to see. Uh -huh. And I, like, was sort of just, like, rubbing his back the entire time. Maybe, like, for several hours. Pie and <laughs> rubbing his back for hours? That's to not so innocent, where, Carly Morgan. To the point where I'm pretty sure I like shredded his shirt a little. Like it, it probably wore out the threads because I remember later. Did you have a fresh at my set? Nails, <laughs> looking at my nails and being like, why are they red underneath? And it was all fabric from his shirt because I was such a dork and I was so nervous about the whole thing. Was it nervous rubbing? Yeah. yeah. We're, we're going to talk about <laughs> nervous rubbing. In the same segment, we're going to talk about nakedness on stage here in just a second. Yeah. Anyway, it was... <laughs> It was a really I, awkward time, and like looking back, I realized what a freaking dork I was. But anyway, you know who you are. Sorry about that. I was a dork of a kid who didn't know how to do anything. Speaking of I rubbing, didn't know how to socialize. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of rubbing, is this really the transition you want to make? <laughs> well, this isn't a transition. It's more of a sidebar <laughs> or tangent. I love it. Let's but, do it. But have you noticed, like, if you're ever like, I don't know, with a, I guess a somebody you're dating right like like it's not um yeah you're not like it's not a first date anything. yeah and it's also not marriage yeah some people i actually had a woman say to me once i i was just sort of i th i thought i was rubbing her back in an affirming isn't this great watching right. a ball game sort of way mm -hmm. and she said hey mike and i said yes and she said you're at a 10 <laughs> i need you to be at a two <laughs> You know what? Honestly, if he and I would have had better commu communication skills, I'm sure he would have said the same. <laughs> and I realized, oh, like she's saying I'm rubbing her back too hard. <laughs> right. Because I don't know. I Like when I see an animal, I'm like, hey, buddy. Yeah. Scrub, yeah. scrub, scrub. <laughs> yeah. Which you've had to really change because of my dog. I have. Because he won't do that. <laughs> and, and I think it's Rango, your chihuahua, uh -huh. <laughs> who has taught me you can't go wrong with a one. Right. You, you can go wrong with a 10. If you mm -hmm. start at a 10, you're going to find out pretty quick. <laughs> that's the wrong, rah, 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 rah. that's right. the wrong move. Yeah. Yeah. But if you start at a one, because mm -hmm. I'm just a 10. I We've talked about how I'm either maniacal or asleep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, you're a bold person. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, yeah, that's, that's, a, it's just how I am. Some folks would say that you're a big personality. I don't want to be in therapy right now, but. <laughs> right. But yeah. Okay. So you're rubbing his back. Yeah. And I, I'm pretty sure I, like I was doing it cause I was just nervous <laughs> and I, I didn't know what to do with my hands. Oh, right. So, so I was just like, you know, rubbing his back. And I did that for like the whole two hours that we were down there and just shredded his shirt. And I'm going to throw this out there. You didn't know what to do with your hands, and uh -huh. you didn't know that doing nothing was also an option. I didn't. It felt wrong. I couldn't. Yeah. 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 It's fine. I was young and very socially awkward and didn't know how to act in a... In a I'm trying to find in my notes where the hell we dating are. Dating situation like that. Oh, Ides of March. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. All right. Yeah, because we, we talked about Pi Day. Also, Disney on Ice, Mickey's search party, I hear, was a lot of fun. Yes, and my niece and nephew went to that, and apparently it was Aww. great. My mom later, so she took the kids to it, and she's like, man, you know, as soon as we finished, I was like, I should have invited Carly to that, because she would have loved it. And I was like, yeah, 
Of course I would have. What were you thinking in the first place? But you were so busy. You had so many so things going on last week. Right. Well, and not only that too, but also she, basically she was like, well, you know, I just assumed it was going to be a kid show, you know, like Bluey Live or something that you wouldn't care about. But then it was like actually really well done. <laughs> and and you are the woman who, when we went to Disneyland less than a year ago, uh-huh. bought special Disney outfits for your niece and oh, nephew. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. you, if you go to Disney as a kid, you have to wear a costume. Yeah. Like you're missing out on things if you don't. Never would have occurred to me. I mean, I took mm-hmm. my kids and we just were shorts and tank tops but really yeah yeah no I, okay only because i know that the characters are, wa- are walking around the park and i know that they'll like interact with you if you're dressed a certain way as if you're that character yeah and i wanted the kids point. to have that experience well yeah very thoughtful great yeah, idea i'm a good aunt <laughs> i made a couple of i i gotta uh pat myself on the back or whatever uh-huh. um i made a couple of saint patty's day dishes Yes, you did. Corned beef and cabbage. We had some mm-hmm. last night. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Right. You had the stone ground mustard on yours. Mm-hmm. I had the horseradish on mine. It was pretty good. I made some brats, mm-hmm. which were great. Yeah. And I love, by the way, this is a new piece of information. You said. <laughs> right. So my family's traditional Irish meal that we make is Reuben's mm-hmm. on Sunday, mm-hmm. which is what we're going to be eating later today. Okay. <laughs> and um, we do honey mustard on ours, which I always thought was the way that you should do it. Especially because it tastes delicious. You're so honey mustard. I am. <laughs> if you ever need to get a sauce for Carly, it's always honey mustard. I love me a honey mustard. I just do. It's good. My The traditional for me is uh, corned beef and cabbage. Right. And and then you can do the potatoes and the carrots. Mm-hmm. I don't because I'm I'm protein and veggies right now. Right. right. I got to be. Mm-hmm. It's been a long, cruel winter. And- right. Right. Well, and you and Listen I also- Listen to that barrel chest slap. <laughs> It's time to get rid of some of this. Right. And you and I also made some shepherd's pie earlier this week, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some salmon. Mm-hmm. Anyway, St. Patty's was a lot of fun. We went to St. Patty's on Park. Here's the Celt. Look at that dapper gentleman in green. And later, in fact, at the end of the episode, we'll sh- we'll play all of the IFFD pipes and drums. Right. You know, the bagpipers. Mm-hmm. We'll play their uh, version of Scotland the Brave. Very cool. Isn't that are are Ireland and Scotland friends, or is I mean, or are bagpipes primarily Scottish? But because we're so American, we just go, oh, it's those guys over there across the pond. Okay, England, they, Scotland, Ireland. What's the difference? Does it matter? They do have some cultural similarities, and they're also very geographically close. Yeah, there are distinct differences between them. It's sort of like if you said north and south of the U.S. Like there are definitely some very big distinct uh-huh. differences between the two, but there are also a lot of similarities as well. Great analogy. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Last week, we talked about the Idaho Falls Farmer's Market and how it goes every Saturday, May through October. They're Mm -hmm. on Memorial in between Broadway and the Roundabout. Mm -hmm. They're going an extra hour. So from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Which is so awesome. I'm so excited. Also, they just released last week. They're going to still do the Wednesday nights in Ammon. Oh, nice. Instead of six to nine, they're going five to nine. Oh, that's really nice. You can stop by on your way home and get Mm -hmm. the bread and the cheese and the meat and the herbs for dinner on a Wednesday night. That's pretty rad. I mean, especially because like last year I was working retail. So I couldn't do Saturdays because I was always working. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to it's nice for folks to have the option. You know, now I'm working mostly weekdays, but also I still have Wednesday evenings free. So be prepared. <laughs> Happening know? in McCowan Park. So, yeah, I just love that they're expanding. I, I really do love supporting local and just right. kind of, you know, I, I mean, I love moving my body. Mm-hmm. Just going out and walking. It's, it's nice yeah. and easy and seeing what there is to see. I like to see and be seen. Yes, you love to see and be seen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our buddy Pierce Brosnan. Oh, yeah. Remington Steel. Uh-huh. 007. Goldeneye. <laughs> N64. Oh, yeah. You know, I've got that at home. Yeah, we need to play. Yeah, we do. You remember that in January, he was cited for straying off the path in Yellowstone. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. I, if I were the judge, I'd be like, bro, you know you fucked up? Yeah. 
Okay, cool. No, it, that's the thing, though. We good, fam. Okay, think of all of the men who've modeled their lives after 007. Do you know how many people will try to introduce their last name first and then their first name just because that's how James Bond does it? Okay? you. That's the thing. You have to make an example of him because he's so in the public eye. He, so, uh, for straying off the path, find mm-hmm. $500 and then also ordered <laughs> to make... Which isn't anything for Pierce Brosnan. Like, come on. A thousand dollar donation to Yellowstone Forever, a nonprofit organization that supports the park. Mm-hmm. He's got to do that by April 1st. Which also, realistically, he, as a, a good PR move, should have doubled it and then done it. Well, he kind of did do a good PR thing. He posted, mm-hmm. hey, as an environmentalist, I have the utmost respect for and love of our mm-hmm. natural world. I deeply regret my transgression and offer my heartfelt apologies to all for trespassing in this sensitive area. Hashtag stay on the path. Right, which is great. Maybe that was court ordered too. I don't know, but classy move. <laughs> yeah, and also And Pierce, money- we love you and you can do whatever you want. You can go <laughs> pet a bison. Okay, I do love Pierce Brosnan. Don't get me wrong if you ever see this, which you won't, but if you ever do, yeah. I do love you, Pierce. He doesn't and also, He doesn't waste his days searching his name on And also, all I'm saying is, you know, if you need a new PR person who will make you actually look good, you know, because whoever is currently managing you isn't doing their best job, just saying, sweetheart, um, he you can come do, to me. <laughs> he can do no wrong in my eyes. I mean, yeah. Pierce, you can do whatever you want. In fact, okay, look, and let's be real, 1500 bucks. That's like for him nothing. That's like fifteen cents. That's pocket change. Mm-hmm. He'll never miss. Yeah, he probably fact, spent that on a night out. You've heard right. Like um, I saw a screenshot of a tweet on mm-hmm. Pinterest. I don't know. Right from somebody who said, you know, I dated a man who was wealthy, uh-huh. and he didn't view the world in terms of right and wrong. Right. He viewed the world in terms of how much it would cost him. Right. So when he would park in front of my New York town home mm-hmm. illegally, he'd be like, oh, yeah, it's just a $150 fine. Right. He's like, it's not that it's illegal. It's that it costs me $150 to park here. Right. I'm sure Pierce feels bad for sure. transgressing on national park land. <laughs> right. But, but come on. Okay. Speaking of which. How long is it going to be? Because it's warming up. Last snowstorm of the season kind of happened. Might have a mm-hmm. few flurries here and there. I hope not. I really need it to be warm for Easter. I don't want to be freezing my tail off while I'm trying to look for Easter eggs. Yeah. <laughs> Highs in the 50s this week. Maybe mm-hmm. hit 60. Mm-hmm. I wonder how long it's going to be before we see the first Yellowstone tourist <laughs> gored by a bison. And you know, that's the thing. Probably not too long. And I do get it. Because they really do look super cute and cuddly and fluffy. Like, they look like they feel like a sheep, you know, which I love to pet when we go to the uh, fair. Until you realize they're bigger than your car. Oh, they're massive. But, I mean, so are cows. And cows are cute with their big, long eyelashes (laughs) and their little black and white spots. They're just cute, you know? And they just look like wild cows. (laughs) Or some 20-year-old frat Chad boy, Mm -hmm. you know, falling into a hot pot and being instantly dissolved into a nice Chad tea. Which is terrible. It's going to happen, and I, it's sad. That's the thing. It doesn't need to happen if people would just read the signs and not be dumb. It's not a zoo. It's not. It's a national park. Okay. Next up. What the hell's this? Uh, that's super cool, by the way. This is this is called a goldback. Uh-huh. When we were at the Snake River Animal Shelter Furball mm-hmm. a couple weeks ago, met a guy named Abram. And he's an investor in this company, so mm-hmm. you know, consider the source. Right. He's right. he's selling you on this stuff. Mm-hmm. But I thought this was an interesting idea. This is one one thousandth of an ounce of gold mm-hmm. that I'm holding in my hand. It's currently about four or five bucks mm-hmm. worth of gold. But it's I don't know, laminated and it's got a heck of a design on it. It's real gold too. It's real gold. You could literally take that, melt it down, and it would be gold. If you had a thousand of these. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you'd melt it down to an ounce of gold. Uh huh. Interesting, isn't it? Right. This is an interesting currency. And by the way, it's not U.S. legal tender, but it is technically a negotiable instrument, mm-hmm. shall we say? Yeah. So, which I mean, to be fair, even like a chicken could be a negotiable in- instrument. Exactly. You know, like if there's someone who an egg, a shell, a stone. Yeah, yeah. Like it has value because <laughs> we agree it has value. Right. But you know, I I I know a couple preppers. A mm-hmm. couple of them are close to me in my life. I don't agree with the philosophy that the world's going to hell in a handbasket. 
Right. To our point we made last week, the world's always been going to hell in a handbasket. Mm -hmm. But this fascinates me because it's the opposite of crypto. Right. Which is based on the same premise. Exactly. Crypto only has value because we say it has value. The only difference is that with crypto, you don't have anything physical. It, yes. It can yeah. evaporate yeah. in a heartbeat, whereas you're left with one one thousandth of an ounce of this. Goldback.com. And, gold, and gold can be used for a lot of things. Yeah. Outside of just jewelry. Like it, it's put in electronics all the time. Yes. There are actual valuable reasons to have and use gold. There's a theory that the only reason we exist on this earth mm -hmm. is because we were planted here by aliens to mine gold. <laughs> Hilarious. It's a great conductor. It it's used would... in visors, like by spacemen, by NASA. Like, yeah, right. it's got several purposes. It would kind of make sense too. Cause like, you know, we like, we are kind of hardwired to be like, Ooh, shiny thing. Pretty. I want shiny thing. Yes. I'm going to get shiny thing. Why is that? Like, isn't that neat? I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, either that or it's just cause shiny thing is pretty. Anyway, goldback.com, it's already a, like approved and in use in Utah. Mm -hmm. Like they like there are some stores that have a goldback machine that they'll take this currency. Wild. So That's yeah, cool, it's, it, it's kind of cool. It's kind of a mm -hmm. cool idea. Just throwing that on your radar if you're interested in that kind of stuff. This is something I think if it comes to the walking dead. Right. You know, okay, but also you can negotiate with. Hear me out though. If it comes to the Walking Dead, gold will no longer have a value. We don't need gold to do anything. At that point, what we need are f we need food and ammo. Well, yeah, again to the point that it is worth what people say it's worth. Right. Realistically, if we were in a Walking Dead type situation, people don't have the room in their backpacks to be carrying around gold backs. Well, okay. I agree, and I just want to say these are super thin. Sure. And if I had a thousand of them, they yeah. probably wouldn't be that heavy. They wouldn't be too bad. That's and the, true. The one thing they say on their website is this solves the problem of negotiating, mm -hmm. you know, purchasing something with something of value. You're right. Uh, at smaller increments than, say, having a gold coin or a gold bar. Which is brilliant. I'm just saying in that very specific scenario that you're right. talking about, I don't think people will care about gold anymore because really what they'll care about is food and ammo. And that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. And baseball bats with barbed wire wrapped around them and red scarves for some reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like a, like a really bitch in leather jacket. That's about it. You know? So if you got a really bitch in leather jacket, hang on to that. Cause that's really what you're going to need to barter with. Yeah. Want to mention if you're a crafter and you kind of are. When I have time, I love to be crafty. You certainly have all the supplies. You've got like <laughs> the glue gun. Oh, yeah. And the sponge paper that you cut out for mm -hmm. things. Yeah. I've and got the ribbons. not just regular hot glue. I've got hot glitter glue. Yeah. I've got like the good stuff. Carly's got all the stuff. <laughs> yeah. This might interest you. Spring Fling Craft Fair uh, by Me and You Events, March 23rd, 10 to 4, Snake River Convention Center. At the Shiloh Inn on Lindsay. Oh, rad. I like that. Yeah. See that does sound fun. Well, and also, there's some really crafty people around here. Oh, yeah. I don't know if it's because we have a really heavy Mormon population, and they can't do, like, the regular cool people stuff, like drinking and smoking, so instead <laughs> they craft, you know? All the St. Patrick's Day stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, maybe that's part of it. Uh, but, yeah, there are some people around here who make some really incredible stuff. Like yeah. that cooking with Kent kid that makes those incredible macarons. Mm -hmm. And he's like, what, 10 now? Yeah. He's just young and yeah. he's already like a, his own little business. Yeah. I, it's like the Seinfeld episode where George doesn't have sex for like a month or whatever. and becomes really <laughs> smart. Like when you don't have your vices. Right. You can really get things accomplished. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I totally agree with that. Yeah. Well, you know, and speaking of vices, isn't there kind of an interesting play coming to town? Yes, there is. So glad you brought this up. And before we even mention what it is, I want to say this is the perfect thing for our show to promote. <laughs> and here's why. Radio ain't going to talk. it. Neil and Julie, you're not going to hear this from them. Right. Local News 8, you ain't going to hear it from them. That one other red news website, that you, you they won't touch this. No. We will. Because Hell it's a, yeah. It's about vibrators. <laughs> Which is kind of hilarious. Zzz, you know, the buzzy <laughs> yeah. buzz, the toy, the thing under your pillow, the thing in your nightstand, the thing you tell your babysitter not to go near your nightstand for this reason. Yeah, yeah. You Maybe really... even hide it between you're not fooling anybody, the mattress and the box spring. Uh-huh. You know, they really need to make some kind of like 
really good. First off, they should have bed frames with like built in hidden alcoves. They should. Like That'd the, be fact, a great idea. the fact that that's not already a thing, at least for like queen size mattresses and up. I wonder it's kind of dumb. I wonder if they tackle, because that's a big part of what I understand vibrator culture <laughs> to, to be is where you hide it. Yeah. Yeah. In a shoe, in your underwear drawer. Personally, I don't know. I don't own a vibrator. Right. But, um, you know, though, that makes sense to put it in like an underwear drawer or something. Cause then like, let's say for example, you are stranded somewhere and you need an important document mm -hmm. and it happens to be in the same drawer as your vibrator. You've already messed up. You did done goof kid. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like there's nothing you can do at that point to make things not awkward for whoever you've decided to call. Cause it's gotta be someone close to you. You can't call your parents now. Le you know, <laughs> <laughs> like it's got to be a good buddy or a lover and that's it. <laughs> Let's say what this is first before we keep going on vibrators. <laughs> right. It's right. called In the Next Room or The Vibrator Play by Sarah Hilarious. Rule put on by Artie. Mm -hmm. uh, Which Art is at the Phoenix over on Broadway. Uh -huh, right next to the, the Artatorium. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And sponsored by, can we just say, Grant, a bunch of other people and Grand Teton Gastroenterology. Ha, huh, funny. <laughs> I wonder if they have a little part before the play where they're like, hey, don't put this in your butt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you talk to any gastroenterologist right. and ask them what they do, they will probably say, I do butts and guts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and so thank you for sponsoring that. Also, Hilarious. Also sponsored by Eagle Rock Indian Motorcycles. Oh. AKA the largest vibrators in the world, as I understand it. Do you remember that that 70s show episode where Red wants to get a motorcycle and Kitty is so against it? And then he takes her out for a ride on it and she's like, <laughs> We have to have this. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and I mean, let's face it, we're all humans. We all have needs. Mm -hmm. We all like relief from time to time. Yeah. And. The, it, it's so funny to me. So electricity came around late 1800s. Right. And the vibrators followed shortly after. And I believe mm -hmm. I have my facts straight when I say that the inventor of the vibrator was a doctor mm -hmm. who got so tired of female patients coming into his office and needing to be relieved. Well, treated for hysteria was the premise. <laughs> right. You're hysterical. Right. Yeah. Which also kind of hilarious. It's like, Bitch, you are so stressed out. You need to just like come for a second and you'll be fine. Right. And also like not totally wrong. I mean, there is some truth to post not clarity. Yeah. If we're, if, if we're talking about this, and mm -hmm. I guess we are because of this play, mm -hmm. which I guess is about, I don't know even when it takes place, but I, oh, oh, geez. It has a uh, partial nudity in it. I wonder what that is. Yeah. I'm kind of intrigued. I probably don't demonstrate it on stage, but- like, I'm guessing we're going to see a butt. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's my guess. This sounds interesting, though. Do you want to go? Oh, of course. This, yeah. This yeah. Uh, I'm First oddly off, curious about this. I actually really love the and Phoenix. I, and I love that it's happening in Idaho Falls, Idaho. Right. Okay, so the Phoenix is a really cool place because they do a lot of irreverent plays in mm -hmm. general. Um, and they're catered by the Bee's Knees, which, if you know, they're the Bee's Knees. It's they're good really stuff. good. Yeah. Yeah, so I think it's a great option. I would absolutely love to go. Um, we actually have gone to a couple of their plays in the past, and always we've always had a great time. It's March 22nd through April 13th. Tickets at artidaho.org, not .com. Hey, little note, Art Idaho. Maybe tell your graphic designer it's not .com. It's .org. And we only give notes to places that we love, so... Coming from a place of love. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But it's it takes place in Victorian era, hysterical patient, doctor, marriage, truly means to love someone. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Sounds like one of the, like we talked about. It sounds kind of nice. Yeah. With the teenage summer mischief movies, it sounds <laughs> right. like it's, it deals with a body topic, but has a sweet, sensitive message. Yeah. That's like nice. Like American Pie. <laughs> or Porky's. <laughs> Still <laughs> never seen. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, you know what? Maybe we need to add that to the maybe list we too. Need to add that to our list of well, Troll 2. Yeah. The Room, The Disaster Artist, Romeo plus Juliet, and Porky's. <laughs> there we go. Great. Now we can, rec we can reference this later when we are like, hey, what should we watch tonight? I listened to an old episode of ours. Uh huh. 
just for fun. Right. And it happened to be the one where I promised to try lobster one day. Right. So let's let's keep that on our back burner. You know, too. we'll make a whole weekend of it. Okay. We'll do nothing but movies because you'll probably be like running back and forth from the bathroom. Mm-hmm. And we'll have lobster. We'll start the weekend off with lobster. Yeah. And then just watch movies the whole weekend. Yeah. We'll recuse ourselves. It'll we'll have great. our vibrators with us. It'll be fantastic. <laughs> just a great time. Which, speaking of recusing ourselves, that reminds me, I actually got a jury summons today. <gasps> you did. I did. And the funny thing is, I've actually gotten a jury summons once before, mm-hmm. and I had to call in and defer it, and I was so disappointed. Because I really, I actually would really love to be on a jury, because I am kind of a true crime girly, you know? <laughs> Let's hope it's nothing like the James Marsden <laughs> jury duty Streaming now on Prime, right. episode five. Right, right. But I would love to be on a jury duty, and I had to uh, not go last time because it was right during the finals of my college my college year. And so there was no way I could defer all of those finals for jury duty. So I'd be like, I can't go this time. Sorry, guys. My mom said no. <laughs> you know? Right. And so I'm really excited for this time, and I'm kind of hoping I get selected because I've always wanted to be on a jury. Well, it's been a fantastic show. It was a much better one last night, we promise. Yeah. Um, Oh, well. Technology sucks. We think (laughs) we've solved the problem. We might actually have to get redundant gear. Yeah, we're we're going to work on that. You know what? If any tech bros have any suggestions of what kind of cameras or systems would work better, let us know. We'd love to talk to you. I'm pretty sure we've got a decent setup, but it's... We, here's the thing. We've got a great setup. It's, it's just something's going on. Times. Yeah, yeah, very frustrating. Very. But you know what? We do it for you, Kermie. Yeah. <laughs> we really do value and treasure you as a listener slash viewer, however you're consuming this. Mm-hmm. And... We're just so grateful. We see our numbers growing and it just lifts our spirits. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we we feel like we're the Shrek. We're the (laughs) DreamWorks Shrek to Disney Pixar. Yeah. And we thank you for being on this ride with us. Right. Well, and, and you know, it's so funny that you say it like that because I think that it's so neat how we've moved from traditional media to basically like YouTube and to the point where like people talk different now. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So this is an observation. Your mom and your aunt are both teachers at a school. Uh huh. And they. Well, no, that's not totally true. My mom's a counselor. My aunt's a teacher. Okay, but they, yeah, they work. They at work a school. at a school. Yeah. And they've noticed a trend where, okay, and we're just finding this out. Mm-hmm. Being brand new to YouTube in terms of content creators, mm-hmm. we're finding out you can't say everything you want. No. You, can, you can't even say what you would say to a friend in a car on the way to a thing. Well, and that's the thing. Even things that are totally innocent, you have to sort of you know, reimagine and censor because it can so easily get you nerfed by the algorithm. Yeah, either nerfed or banned or mm-hmm. demonetized. And we're not even monetized yet, so that's right. not an issue for us. We're working on it, though. <laughs> but yeah, you can't say rape, murder or even anything about politics. Right. We're going to have to bleep all of that. We are. And <laughs> like, so so YouTubers are now saying things like, instead of suicide, mm-hmm. they're saying unalived himself. Mm-hmm. And so now kids are wandering through the halls of school saying, oh my God, a test. I can't believe it. I'm, I just, I would rather unalive myself. Right. Because that's the media that they're consuming. Now, if you've studied the dictionary and the English language like I have over the Mm -hmm. years and been fascinated by the annual Merriam-Webster list of words they've added this year, Uh um, like crunk, I think is the last one I remember 10 years ago. Funny. But um, you know that we, the people, control the English language. Oh, yeah. And if we use it, it goes in the dictionary. Mm -hmm. Ain't, Ain't a word and it ain't. Yes, it is. Yeah. And it is. And that's what we do. I remember when people were outraged by the fact that selfie was put in the dictionary. Yeah. Yeah. Selfie stick. Yeah. Which like, <laughs> sorry, dude, but it's, it's part of our common vernacular right now. And it's something that's important for people to be able to understand and define so that when selfies are no longer a thing, they can come back and understand what we were talking about. So who controls what goes on YouTube? Hint, it ain't YouTube. It's the advertisers. Mm-hmm. Or maybe it's YouTube in order to attract the advertisers. Right. So I just want to make the point that, thank you for bringing this up. Mm -hmm. Isn't it funny that advertisers are controlling 
the content that YouTube allows on their site mm -hmm. to the point where kids in schoolway hallways now are speaking differently. Right, right. Like it's so, it's so funny. Crazy. Well, and it's so funny to think that obviously we know what the person is saying and they're speaking in code, but instead of translating that code in our day to day, we continue to speak in code. So will, will this get me banned from YouTube? Kill me now. <laughs> yes, it will. <laughs> Not banned, but like this video will be nerfed if you do that. Redonkulous. I know. Isn't that crazy? Also not a word. Or is it? Well, and it's so funny too, because <laughs> there have been a couple of times when I've said, hey, I don't know if you want to say it like that because YouTube's going to nerf it. Yeah. And then we said it like that anyway, and it nerfed it. Carly has, <laughs> Carly's right. I'm wrong. Always. In sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> now that's the thing though, because I, so I love true crime. That's one of my favorite topics to watch especially on youtube and i've seen how they talk about it and they've specifically said things like i have to say it like this because of the because of youtube and i can't like but you know what i'm saying but i'm gonna right. say sa instead of the other thing sa or sv mm -hmm. dv exactly yeah, DA, yeah. Mm -hmm. domestic assault yeah Do right I, really you had to really you had to mute that okay but that's the thing like i learned that pretty quick because of the content that I was consuming. Right. You know? I just, it's distracting to me when. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm a free speech advocate anyway, but of also course. as an adult, when I'm trying to consume content and they bleep a word out, I right. don't know what you just said. And I will say, at least we're not doing that heinous bleep like we used to. It's just silent. Yeah, just mute it. Yeah. Like yeah. back in the day, I remember they'd do eh on the TV and it was so annoying. And then they just started cutting well, it. Well, it, it draws instead. attention. Exactly. Like a, like rap lyrics on the radio now, if they right. go, get a little too rowdy, they just put a beat there. Right. You know? Right. Let's be, I don't know. I, it's smarter. I know it's one world and it's for children and adults. We're mostly for adults. Right. You've got your big boy panties on right now <laughs> if you're listening to us. Okay. We're going to leave you with this. It was a great time. St. Patty's on Park. Yeah, it was actually really well done. I we're, was very impressed. We're going to leave you with a few minutes of Scotland the Brave. And also, how brilliant to put it on Park Street with the Celt on it. Right in front of the Celts. Yeah, that's kind of like Bar Alley, too. Like, it's got all kinds of bars there. Yeah. You know, it, it was a great location for the event. That's true. And I was a little bummed that people didn't go and explore a little bit more, because I was working on A Street the entire day, helping out my friend, and we didn't get hardly anyone from that. Yeah, interesting, isn't it? Yeah, I was kind of bummed. I, I wonder if a majority of Idaho Falls people are like, nah, it's too crowded. I don't want to deal with the crowds. Which I'm usually kind of like that. We parked three blocks away just to be conservative. We probably could have parked a block away now that I think about it. Sure. But yeah, the, the party on a Friday and Saturday night, especially in the summer, mm -hmm. is in between A Street and Broadway on Park, downtown Idaho Falls. Right, yeah. For sure. And it certainly was on St. Patty's Day mm -hmm. uh, with the Idaho Falls Fire Department pipes and drums, bagpipers. And they put on such a great performance, by the way. And they like rolled up, uh, put some brats on the grill too, which smelled so good. Sold I, some t-shirts for merch. Right, yeah. right. I watched them like pull these cardboard boxes full of uh, like ketchup and mustard out. And I was like, what's up with that? And then I see the grill <laughs> and I smell that food. And I was like, okay, actually this is, I love food. I'm, I'm a very food centric person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they did such a great job. And on top of that, they played amazingly. And that is why IFFD, you guys are our IFAF this week. Chris, Whoosh. high five. 21 finger gun Pew salute you. and chef's kiss to, to you. you. Fantastic. We'll leave you with Scotland the Brave. Enjoy. <laughs>